book of Leviticus derives its name from Levi, the tribe of Israel designated to serve as priest. It contains instructions for the priest to perform sacrifices and ceremonies in the tabernacle, and duties of the Israelites in offering them. After living in Egypt for so long, many of the Israelites had adopted Egyptian customs and idols, so these Levitical laws were needed to point them back to God's law. The book is a detailed guide for the Israelites, particularly the Levitical priests, on how to live a holy life and maintain a covenant relationship with God. It begins with a series of instructions on various types of sacrifices that the Israelites are to offer. These include burnt offerings, grain offerings, peace offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings, each with specific rituals and purposes. These sacrifices are central to the Israelites' worship and serve to atone for sins, express gratitude, and ensure communal harmony. Chapters 1 through 7 meticulously describe the procedures for each type of offering. The burnt offering, for example, is to be a male animal without blemish, symbolizing total dedication to God. The grain offering, made of fine flour, oil, and frankincense, represents the fruits of human labor and dedication. The peace offering is a communal meal shared among the offerer, the priests, and God, symbolizing fellowship. Sin and guilt offerings are specifically for atonement and purification, emphasizing the need for repentance and divine forgiveness. Leviticus 8-10 through 10 recounts the ordination of Aaron and his sons as priests. Chapter 8 describes the ordination ceremony of Aaron and his sons, conducted by Moses following God's instructions. The ceremony begins with a public assembly at the entrance of the Tent of Meeting, where Moses anoints Aaron with holy oil, symbolizing his consecration to God's service. Aaron and his sons are then dressed in their priestly garments, which signify their roles and responsibilities. This elaborate ceremony involves various sacrifices, including a bull for a sin offering and two rams, one for a burnt offering and one for a consecration offering. The blood from these sacrifices is used to anoint the altar and Aaron's sons, symbolizing their purification and dedication to God's service. In chapter 9, the focus shifts to the initiation of Aaron and his sons, into their priestly duties. On the eighth day after their ordination, Aaron begins his ministry by offering sacrifices for himself and the people, including a calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Moses instructs Aaron on the proper procedures for these offerings, ensuring they are conducted according to God's commands. After the sacrifices are made, Aaron blesses the people and God's glory appears to the entire assembly. A divine fire consumes the offerings on the altar, signifying God's acceptance and the success of the ordination. Chapter 10 recounts the tragic incident involving Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, who offer unauthorized fire before the Lord, an act of disobedience and irreverence. Their actions result in immediate divine retribution, as fire from the Lord consumes them. This event underscores the seriousness of approaching God with the proper reverence and adherence to his commands. Moses reminds Aaron and the community that those who serve God must uphold his holiness. Aaron's reaction is one of silent acceptance, demonstrating his submission to God's will. Following the deaths of Nadab and Abihu, Moses gives further instructions to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar. They are commanded not to mourn publicly or leave the entrance of the tent of meeting as they must continue their priestly duties. This command highlights the importance of maintaining their consecrated status and fulfilling their responsibilities, despite personal loss. Moses also emphasizes the need for priests to distinguish between the holy and the common, and between the clean and the unclean, to teach the Israelites all the statutes given by the Lord. Moses then instructs Aaron and his sons on the proper consumption of the offerings, Specific portions of the sin and grain offerings are designated for the priests to be eaten in a holy place as part of their sustenance. However, Moses discovers that Eleazar and Ithamar have not eaten the sin offering as commanded. Aaron explains that given the day's tragic events, he felt it inappropriate to consume the offering. Moses accepts this explanation, showing a measure of flexibility in applying the laws during extraordinary circumstances. This section underscores the sacredness of the priestly office and the stringent requirements for those who serve in it. Chapters 11 through 15 cover the laws of purity, detailing what is clean and unclean for the Israelites. 
These chapters include dietary laws which designate certain animals as clean and others as unclean, significantly influencing Jewish dietary practices, kashrut. There are also regulations concerning childbirth, skin diseases like leprosy, and bodily discharges. These laws emphasize the need for physical and spiritual cleanliness, reflecting the broader theme of holiness and separation from defilement. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is the focal point of chapter 16. It is the most solemn and significant ritual in Leviticus, where the High Priest enters the Holy of Holies to make atonement for himself, his household, and the entire community of Israel. The ritual involves the sacrifice of a bull and a goat, and the sending away of a scapegoat bearing the sins of the people into the wilderness. This annual ceremony is crucial for the purification and reconciliation of the Israelites with God. Chapters 17 through 20, often referred to as the Holiness Code, outline the standards for moral and ethical conduct among the Israelites. These chapters cover a wide range of topics, including the prohibition of consuming blood, regulations against idolatry, sexual morality, and social justice. The Holiness Code emphasizes that the Israelites are to be holy because God is holy, and their conduct should reflect their covenant relationship with Him. Leviticus 21 through 22 sets forth additional laws for the priests, highlighting the need for them to maintain a higher standard of holiness due to their role as mediators between God and the people. These chapters include regulations concerning marriage, physical defects, and the consumption of holy offerings. The priests are to be exemplary in their conduct, ensuring the sanctity of their service and the offerings they present. Chapters 23 through 25 detail the religious festivals and sabbatical years, establishing a rhythm of worship and rest for the Israelites. Key festivals include Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. These festivals are times of communal celebration and remembrance of God's provision and deliverance. The sabbatical year and the year of Jubilee underscore the principles of rest, restoration, and economic justice. Chapter 26 presents the blessings for obedience and the curses for disobedience, reinforcing the conditional nature of the covenant between God and the Israelites. Obedience to God's commandments results in blessings such as prosperity, peace, and divine presence. In contrast, disobedience leads to a series of escalating curses, including disease, famine, and exile. This chapter serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of covenant faithfulness. Leviticus concludes in chapter 27 with laws concerning vows and dedications. This chapter outlines the procedures for making and fulfilling vows to the Lord, emphasizing the seriousness of making commitments to God. It also includes provisions for redeeming things dedicated to God, such as people, animals, and property. The book ends by underscoring the Israelites' responsibility to uphold their commitments and maintain their holiness before God. In summary, Leviticus is a comprehensive manual for worship, morality, and communal living, designed to help the Israelites maintain their covenant relationship with God. Its emphasis on holiness, purity, and obedience highlights the distinct identity of the Israelites as God's chosen people, called to reflect His holiness in every aspect of their lives. What's going on, guys? It's Jason Talley, the creator of AI Bible Sagas. First and foremost, I just want to thank everybody for the support, no matter how you discovered my content, Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok. Uh, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you 100%. Um, also, I want to thank everybody that support via Cash App and becoming a member on a YouTube channel. Um, you are greatly loved. I appreciate you guys. I just wanted to uh, touch bases with you guys a little bit because uh, my original plan when I first um, started this journey of August of last year is just to like I just wanted to tell Bible stories in a raw uncut way where pretty much you can enjoy it the same way how people enjoy watching power on stars or something like that and 
that was my original plan just to tell the stories um so i was planning on skipping some books books like leviticus or psalms and stuff like that books that don't really have a lot of stories to tell but you know i get comments all the time telling me to do every book so here we are so i at least wanted to give a rundown of books like this that don't have a lot of narrative in it it's more so instructional I just wanted to give a rundown where you know, people that's been following the content can you know what happened or what the content is in that book so once again thank you guys for supporting the channel we're not stopping there's so much more to go we got podcasts coming once again thank you guys Thank you.